Welcome back, it's Sean. I'm going to be giving you a really, really short coding short today. It's a really weird way to say it, but, but I have a little thing I found about Entity Framework 8 that is a breaking change and affected some clients of mine. So I wanted to show you how to get around it and how to find the problem. If you like this sort of content, please like, subscribe. It all really helps. If you have some questions or comments, go below the like button and go ahead and add that comment. I try to respond to them as fast as I can. And thanks for watching. So Entity Framework 8 has a particular issue here. There's always been a performance bottleneck with doing select clauses to return anonymous objects. When you're working with Entity Framework and SQL Server, this has always been done with a subquery. In Entity Framework 8, they've changed this to use open JSON, which is a more efficient way to do it. It gets it back as a piece of JSON instead of having to construct it. But it does cause a problem because open JSON isn't supported in every version of SQL Server. Let's take a look at this bug and how we can fix it. This bug won't affect you if you're using either a recent version of SQL Server, using Azure SQL, or you're using another engine. This really feels like it's specific to the SQL Server provider for Entity Framework 8. And it has been noted by Entity Framework team that this is a breaking change. I'll add a link to that breaking change in the notes below this video. So I've got a pretty small example here. And all it has is one API that gets some people. And you can see I'm doing a select here to pull information across this join. And that's sort of part of this magic is that when we use this, it's going to be using that open JSON facility in SQL Server. So I'm going to open up a console real quick. And I'm going to pretend this is Greenfield, right? So I'm just going to say .NET EF database update. I don't have a database. I do have migrations in the project, but this will create a brand new database for me. And I went ahead and created that database for us. And you can see the info to show you exactly everything it's building, but that's not necessary for what we're trying to do. With it generated, all we're doing in program.cs is getting a hard-coded connection string, because I'm only using this inside of my development environment. And I'm adding a DB context and just specifying the connection string. And there's no weirdness here in the context either. We've got two objects, and the only thing I'm doing is adding some sample data. Even these classes are pretty plain old, small classes. Managers have reports. Those reports are a collection of people. And these individual people have some small amount of data with them. Again, nothing magical going on here. So if we go ahead and run this... And we have a HTTP file where we can execute this. And so we go ahead and send this request. You'll see that it gets it fine, right? Doing exactly what we asked. We're projecting into this object that has fields from both objects. But we looked at the log. What's it actually doing here, this is just the same query executed twice, is it is pulling in those individual values from open JSON, right? That's the key here. And again, if you're using a new database, everything's gonna be great, but it's not gonna be great. And let me show you why. We're gonna look at this people database real quick. Just look at the properties. And one of the properties down here in options is compatibility level. So this is actually being built for SQL Server 19 or above. And it works fine there. But if you happen to have databases or database servers that are using an older version, like my clients were using SQL Server 2014 because they have an existing app that works with it, we can't touch the database schema. So if I change that, let's come back here, run it again. And let's send that request. You immediately get a very arcane error. Lots of stack traces. And what ultimately is saying is... It's showing you the query here, the same one we saw before, but it's saying incorrect syntax at dollar sign. So it doesn't like this. And of course it doesn't, because that's part of the syntax of OpenJSON. And we've told 
our database to treat this as an older version of T-SQL. This doesn't exist yet. And so the fix is pretty simple. If we go back to where we wired up our SQL Server, we can actually pass in a second object here where we can configure it. And one of the ideas is use compatibility level. So by changing this to say, you know, my database is using this level of compatibility. Now, where did that 120 come from? We look at the properties again, options. We'll see that each of the different versions of SQL Server has a number associated with it. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So if your database is on SQL Server 16 or 17, choose those numbers instead. And so let's run it one more time now that I've set that compatibility level. And if we do it now, we can see it's working. The reason it's working is it's using the old query method of actually creating this. So you can actually see inner join to people and it's going ahead and getting it all from the top level select. This is something I really haven't paid attention to until recently and this breaking change really forced me to look at that. And that is setting the compatibility level to the version of SQL Server I'm using. Obviously, if you're not using SQL Server, if you're using Azure SQL, if you're using any of the other database engines, whether they're relational or not, this is probably going to need something different. But for SQL Server, this is what you need to do to make this work. So like I said, a really short one. Hopefully, if you run into this when you try to upgrade to .NET 8, you'll look at that uh, syntax breaking at dollar sign, which is not a great error. Took me a while to dig in and creating reproduction cases. In fact, I was about to send this example in as a reproduction case for .NET 8 to fix it when I realized what the problem was. So thanks for joining me. Again, like and subscribe, as I always say, really does help me. Do you have a new end-to-end -end course on Pluralsight? We'll be updating that to .NET 8 in the next coming weeks once .NET 8 has released. And thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful.